So today we are going to start up with Java. So everyone knows actually how to install Java and Eclipse. So directly I'll go to the variables and data types. Before that, I just want as how to open an Eclipse. We create a project package and then a class. That's what we are going to see. I want you guys to help me. Uh, hey, hi, Danachi. Hi. Can you help me? Right now I have downloaded the Eclipse. When you right click, extract here, we will be getting the Eclipse. Yeah. Okay. So before that, just let me know. Uh, Danachi, Gautami, Pridna, everyone knows how to download Eclipse. They have to download and then everyone has the, the Eclipse software. Please ping me in the chat window. Uh, Gautami, I'm waiting for a response from you also. Okay, so uh, yeah, can you tell me? Uh, I just have to open it, right? Will... Yes, I just want to open the Eclipse here. So once I extract that folder, and does it just, uh, click on that icon of Eclipse? Yes. The how the structure of the Java will be there means it will be like project package and then we have we have a class or a java file that's what we have okay so first before that we also have workspace So first we have to create the workspace. Workspace means that is the place where my code will be saved. So this is where my workspace will come. So I need to give an information where I need to save my code. So for example, I'll browse. Usually it will be there giving information on C drive. Don't save your programs in C drive because if you format the system, it will be a problem. So go to the D drive, then go to your uh, folder for example I'll take Murli laptop then here right now I will go to I'll create a new folder new Eclipse learning that's what I'm going to do so I'll go to the same place Murli laptop new Eclipse learning so this is a place so when I click on OK then when I click on OK here, it's going to create me a workspace here. It creates some temporary files here, which helps me to store and save the files. So we got the Eclipse here. This is our first we get. Okay, so we are done with the workspace. Okay. I'll delete this unwanted this welcome screen right now. I not need it. Okay, so this is how we get the Eclipse here. So first I'll tell you how to get the Eclipse from where. Just browse your Eclipse Kepler download. That is, I'm just giving a version of an Eclipse so that directly I'll go to the place where all the different versions will be available. So Eclipse Kepler download I will give. So here I'll go to the first package. So I'll come here. Here you can see all the different releases available. So right now I'm going to go with Kepler because the UI I felt it is really easier and then good. I'll go for the Eclipse ID for Java W developers. Okay, you have to go for this icon. Here you search for 32 bit or 64 bit. That's what you have to go. So minus 64 bit machine, how I'll confirm is go to my computer, right click properties. 
here you can see whether it's a 32 bit or 64 bit machine mine is a 64 bit machine go for windows 64 bit here you can go for download once i click on download i'll be getting a zip file like this once you get the zip file downloaded right click on the zip file extract here there you will get this folder here eclipse then you can go for it that's it okay so if you want for your java and then jdk okay i will forward some files to you Here I given actually how Java will be executed and then how to install Java JDK. I have mentioned everything will be with screenshots only for you. Okay, follow these steps and then you can download and install the Java in case if you have not done. Okay, everything will be with screenshot. Just follow the instructions alone. Then Eclipse. Eclipse also just know what we have done now the same thing i given eclipse kept the download go to the version search for this icon here then after that 64 bit or 32 bit according to that you will be downloading it then once you download it you have to open the eclipse so for that you will get a workspace launcher select the place where you need to save your files then come down here okay so now we have seen till here i close the welcome screen here now i want to create a project so first i have created the workspace so till now everyone anyone has any questions how to download the eclipse there is no installation process in eclipse just you have to download it that's it clear okay i have a quick question here yes 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 that is it no i'm prakash here mm. yes prakash yeah, so I don't have D drive only the C in my system, so there is no way for me to do anything right on the C formatting. So is it can you come again? I don't have D drive in my system. I didn't format any time directly. I have started using it. It is only C drive. Oh, so only you have C drive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you go for that only. No option, right? Ah no, because it's like from your side you should uh, save the files in a proper uh, place. So that uh, when you format the system, those codes will not be delicate. So usually in my uh, office system, you see I have only C drive. So okay. what I did means actually, for example, this is my C drive means I have created a folder here. So for example, my personal something. Okay, here you start to save all the specific file information. Why means when you save in these places, apart from that, my personal, these all will be formatted. Okay, these all will be formatted and then it will be restored. And then if you have installed any software or something, all these files will be deleted that when they are formatting. So you create a new folder and then store all your information in that folder so that when you sorry guys. When you're going to format your system, in case if you have any problem, you are formatting the system so that you can take a backup of this folder alone. Okay, usually they don't uh, backup the software related uh, programs. Why means because that's the place where uh, viruses will be there. Okay, uh, understood, Prakash? Yeah, very clear. So I don't have option. I will create a separate folder and I will try to do all the Java in that folder. Correct, correct. Any, anything, any work when you're doing, always make sure you have a separate folder in that you're safe. When you're going to format the system, you take all the codes from there. Okay. Okay, guys. So now, 
I created the workspace. The next one, what I need to create means is a project. So how to create the project? So to create the project, go to file new. Okay. I'll ask you guys. Hey, hi, Dharajai. Hi. Uh, can you help me? I want to create a project. Uh, okay. You can go to file. File. New. New. Um, and then uh, you'll have to select a project. Project. Yes, correct. We have to, that is, if you have Java project, you can select that. Otherwise, select project. Yeah. Super. Yes. Uh, then I guess uh, Java project. Yeah. Correct. You can select Java project. Otherwise, under the Java folder, you will have Java project. Click on next. Then give the project name. Yeah, then the project name. So I'll just give my first Java. I'll give. Then environment, it will be CDC. You have to change it to Java SE 1.7 or 1.8 will be there for you. Yeah. Okay, select that, yeah. sorry, 1.7 or 1.8. Then click on finish. Yeah. Cool. Hey, thanks, Danjay, thank you. So then it will be asking me, I will be changing the UI perspective here, Java's perspective, so that right now we are getting Java WE, which is our advanced version, which developers will be using, but we will be using Java only in Selenium. So I'll change it to yes, so that a new section called Java will come. See, we got a new section called Java here. That's it. So we have created the Java project. Then next we have a package. So how to create the package? So once I create the project, I will be having a source folder and then a Jira system library here. Same original folder location. If I go, go to properties. There you can see a source folder and then a bin folder and settings class path. All this. So these two are important source and then bin folder here. Clear up. You will have a source and then bin folder here. So source folder is the place where your Java files will be saved. Bin folder is the place where your dot class files will be saved here. Okay. So what are the class files here? Means um, when I'm going to compile the program. Okay. So when I'm going to compile the program, so it will create a class file. Um, I just want to know you guys know how a Java will be executed or you new new to that because if you are new to that let me know the so that i will help you how a java will be executed um, executed in terms of what i mean uh, that is actually when i'm going to run the program what will happen at the back end any ideas you have or you're totally new to it uh, no i guess new to it okay cool i'll do it So this is how a normally a program will be executed. The same thing, how a Java program will be executed that also we will see. So, so first we write the program here. Okay. In the notepad or a specific file. Okay. So we will be writing the information in those files. So the files, which we will be writing is called as Java statements. Okay. Those things are called as Java statements here. Okay. So that we will be calling it as a high level language. Why we call those things as a high level language means a language which can be understandable by a human. It's called as a high level language. Then that high level language will be given to the translator. 
Okay. Why? Because a high level language can be understood by a human, but it cannot be understandable by a system. So we need to, consistence can understand only zeros and ones. So we need to convert that into zeros and ones. So for that, we have two types of translator. One is a compiler. Another one is an interpreter. These are the two things we have. One is compiler. Another one is interpreter. Okay. So what these two things will do is it will convert that high level language into zeros and ones. That's what this will be doing for us. Okay. So now, what is the difference between the compiler and interpreter? So for example, if I have thousand lines of code in my system, what it compiler will do means all the thousand lines will be converted into zeros and ones. Then only it will be started for execution for me. That's what. Okay. So all the thousand lines will be converted. Then only it will be given for execution. Clear this? Same thing interpreter what it will do mean line by line. Okay. First line will be converted. Then it will be given for execution. Second line will be converted. Then it will be given for execution. Like that it goes on. Understood? Everyone understood this? How the execution goes on? A quick question here, Murali. In real life, we use more uh, compiler or interpreter. Uh, it's like depends on the language. Okay. So if you see basic photon, those languages before and all, they have only one type. One is compiler or interpreter. In Java, if you see, they have both the things. One is compiler, another one is interpreter. Both the things they have so that the execution will be much faster. So industries nowadays also maintaining both? Yes. That is Ruby and all. If you see, it's an interpreter language. Okay. Then we, uh, if you see, Basic is an interpreter. Compiler level, if you see C, C, C++, plus plus, those things are compiler. Only they have compiler alone. They don't have interpreter. Java, if you see, they have both compiler plus both interpreter. They made it actually what in a very um, user-friendly way. So how would it be helpful for the real-time process? How they have done means. Okay, and then why it is being used? We will see the advantages of it. So Java programs we will be writing and then it will be saved as dot Java. Okay, any file will be saved with an extension called dot Java or dot txt or dot xls or xlsx. Okay, everything will be saved with this extension. Understood? So we saved with the files with Java extension so that my system will understand it's a Java file. So I need to execute in a, I need to call the Java. Um, Related libraries to execute this. Okay, so first I have, for example, thousand lines of code means. So first, the thousand lines of code will be given to the compiler. Then after that, it will be converted into a byte code. Okay, so the entire code will be now converted to a byte code now. Okay, while converting, it will be creating another file called dot class. Okay, the file which we will be written is a dot Java. Then after compilation, it will be creating a dot class file. Okay, so what is the advantage and usage of the dot class file? We will see. Okay, I'll be creating the dot class file here. Then after that, then that dot class file will be given to the JVM. Okay, JVM is called as Java Virtual Machine. Okay, what this JVM will do means okay, it will convert the uh, it's, I told you it's a Java virtual machine. So what is this doing is this is the only uh, system which can understand the dot class file. They only can understand the dot class file here. That's what it will do. Clear? Then that JVM once again it will convert the dot class file. Okay, so once again it will be converting the bytecode into another type of bytecode. That is another type of zeros and ones. Then it will be given to the system for execution. That's how it will be executed. Clear for everyone? So, for us, first compiler will be doing one type of conversion. Then it will be stored as a dot class file. Then another JVM will be again getting my information. So, again, that will be converting into 
another type of uh, conversion file here. Understood? So two types of conversion has been done here, and then finally it's been given for CPU for execution. Understood, please? Anyone has any questions on this so far? Okay. Yeah. Next, I'll go for the next one. Just a second. So, I told you JVM is needed for Java to run the class files. Okay, because JVM is the only one which can execute the program. Okay, so compiler will help me to convert that uh, Java files into the class files. Then that class files will be given to the JVM for execution. Then only my execution will start. Correct? So now, JVM is needed for to run my class files here. So we need JVM. To install the JVM, we need JRE. That is Java Runtime Environment. Okay. So inside the JRE, we will have JVM also. When you're installing JRE, that is Java Runtime Environment, we will get the JVM also along with that. So that we can execute the program. Then. We all, we can also we also will be needing JDK that is a Java Development Kit. What is a Java Development Kit means? This is the entire kit, entire set. So what this will do is okay. So this is a place where I will have the Java compiler, JVM plus JRA. Everything will be there with me. Okay. So we need this actually what. JVM, JVM for us. Why we need that JVM means when we come to the Selenium, sorry, not JVM, uh, the entire uh, JDK means when we come to the Selenium, we will be uh, working on with actually integrating with other softwares and then we will be working. So that time we need this entire JDK, then only we can integrate all the information. Clear? Understood this? Then next, I already told you. What is the interpreter and compiler? The advantages and disadvantages we will see. So if you see the advantages, compiler, all the thousand lines of code will be converted, then only my execution will start right now. Correct? So because of this, what's the problem right now? Means? So for me, entire everything will be converted, then we will go for execution. So it will take the initial startup time will be a little bit less for me. Okay, why the initial startup time will be a little bit less than because thousand lines need to be converted, then it will go for execution. But interpreter level, what will happen means initial startup time is actually always faster. But if there is any error in the program, compiler level, uh, it will totally compile everything, all the thousand lines of code. Then if there is any error in the syntax bill area, anything is there, it will throw me at a single shot. So these are the five places you have issues okay so please correct it it will say so now what happened all these places the information speed will be changing it understood then after that what will happen right now for me interpreter level line by line conversion so first line it will be converting then execution second it will be converting then execution so if there is any error in the program, what will happen when it comes to, for example, 350th line, if I have error, only when I come to 350th line, then only when it tries to uh, convert it, it will throw me the error. Understood? So what will happen right now for me? So it will throw me the error and then it will stop the program there. Then again, I will be clearing the error. Then I will start to run. Then again, in the 500th line, I have an error is till 500th line, it will be executing. Then after that, it will throw me error. So like that, each and every point, when I come to that place, then only my execution, I come to know that there is an error in the program. So that's the biggest challenge for me here. Understood? Yes, everyone understood what is the biggest problem here? So when we come to that specific place, then only we all will come to know that there is an error in the program for us okay 
So now I'll come here. So we have created a workspace, a pack project, a package we have to create now, and then a Java file we have to create. So now we'll create a package. So right click on the source folder. So once we create the project, I told you to be creating a source folder and then a bin folder. Correct? Source folder will save all my Java files. Okay. Bin folder will save all my class files. Okay. So bin folder is the one which will have a class file which will be given for execution. Okay. My JVM will take those files and then only will be executed. If you don't have the class files, I cannot execute the program. So what's the advantage of this Java files and then after the, the class files means? Okay, before in older days, there were a problem that is most of them will try to have a um, duplicate your system. So for example, I have built my uh, one project which is related to big basket of code. That is the key one, selling the products. Okay. So I have spent around two and a half to three years of my time and then I created a project. Now what's going to happen? I have created the project, but uh, client, I need to sell my product. So the client is asking me, I just want to uh, see how the application is, uh, is being used. So we have to send the entire code to the client. Then the client will uh, check whether the application is good and then it's comfortable for him. Everything he will give the feedback then and there. Okay. So that's the biggest uh, problem. Sending the entire code to the system. So if it's a genuine customer, it's not a problem. Otherwise, what will happen? He will be uh, giving, uh, he will be duplicating my system. He will take the code and then duplicating the same system will be much easier for him because he has the entire code right now. Now, to avoid that only, what this uh, Java did means. I will be first creating the dot class files. When I'm going to uh, make my system ready, however, what I will do is I will make my uh, what is it? First, I will compile the program. Then I create the dot class files. Okay. Now, when the client the dot class files are used for execution, correct? When my client is going to ask me. I am going to send only the dot class files alone. I will not send me Java files. Why? Because for execution, only dot class files are needed for him. He don't need the Java files. So now for me, advantage is what I am going to safeguard my code. Okay. My code is safeguarded now. So I don't want to worry that actually what I'm going to send the dot class file because dot class files cannot be read by anyone. You cannot understand the program. It can be only used for execution alone. Only JVM can understand that. Okay. So this is how they made safer. Another one is actually what? It's execution also faster here. During compilation itself, I have found out all my errors and then I will be clearing it. So for me, to create the class file, first compilation will be happened. So during the compilation itself, it will be throwing in which other lines I have issues. So clearing out my errors also is easy. Execution also interpreter level. So line by line execution will happen and then it will be giving me any problem during functionality level if you have any errors also. That's the biggest advantage of going with Java here. That's how Java first been become famous. Okay. How to safeguard the code. That's what first they did. Clear? So now we'll come back to the program. So I'll close unwanted files, which are all not needed for me. I need only the package explorer and then the place we will where we will write the code. All the unwanted files I close, so that will be easy for me. So once we create the project, right click new. Okay, where I will right click this in the source folder, new package. I'll give the package name. So first package I'll just give. So it's giving me a warning here. Okay, what's a warning means always package name should be started with the lower case. That's what they say. Okay, package name should be started with the lower case letter. 
so i will start with the lower case letter now it's been called it's not a mandatory one it's a standard practice for me okay it's a standard practice always package name should be started with lower case then i'll click on finish now can you see it has created me a package then right click new class first java file i'll just give just i'm going to give a name first java file so class name always should be started with capital letter okay if i start with this small letter it gives me a warning type name is discourage always classes java uh, name should be started with upper case letter so i'll give upper case letter first java file then as of now i click on this default then click on this public static void main checkbox then click on finish okay what i did means so i'll click on finish here i'll create an another class file right click on the package new class then after that i'll give second java file i created then here i default public static void main this check box i keep okay then you click on finish that's it clear for everyone okay so then i'll get these files here so now i'll increase the font go to window preferences font colors and fonts go to the basic folder text font click on edit i'll make it as right now 13 okay and okay go to window preferences search for font go to fonts you'll be getting a basic folder open the basic folder if you come down you can see text font edit and give the font size here that's it clear for everyone okay anyone has any questions so far you guys are clear now cool uh go to me you're clear okay cool so now we have created it now i'll start to execute the program so here we'll have a class and then my class name and then here the package and then the package name first package because based on this only my class will know this class belongs to first package see for example if i create another package right click new package if i create second package so it started with small letter for the package name that's why it's not giving any problem otherwise it gives me a warning finish if you create a class under this test class i'll just give then make it as default public static equipment click on finish can you see here the package name is second package okay because i have created the class under this place okay so now for me i create another class right click new class learning eclipse i'll create a class i'll make it as default then i forgot to click on this main function then when i click on finish see it has created me a package name where this class belongs to which package name and then what is my class name but the main function information is not there so this public static argument what is this public static argument? this is an executable function only if you have this main function then only you can execute the program otherwise we cannot execute the program so if you want to execute the program here and then i want the main function means for that shortcut is there what is the shortcut means type m a i n control space then enter 
okay so what the shortcut means once again i'll do m a i n control space enter public static one bin understood this is how we have the main function uh clear this so everyone understood how to create a project package and then a class file okay so now i want you guys to create me so before that i'll just print hello world if i want to get hello world so for the main function shortcut is what m a i n then control plus space button okay main and then press control plus space button then if i want to type print hello world so for that s y s o control space then any information that you give in double quotes will be printed here system dot print and hello world so right click run as java application when you give hello world it will be given clear for everyone so if you want to get it so shortcut for that to get it what s y s o control plus space button yes sometimes will be asking me enter button also space button plus enter button okay this is how we used to get understood cool so now i want someone to create the project package and then uh, class file here okay so we'll ask uh, hey hi prithna hello hey hi prithna yeah hi uh, can you help me i want to create a project package and then a class file and then print me hello world program yeah uh, you can go to the file yes and uh, then new then java project super in case if i don't have java project then you need to get into the project yes after that you need to click the java project Correct. or uh, yeah in the java folder we have the java project yes super yes. Yeah. and here we need to get the name of the project i'll give simply second project yes okay. then and here it's already selected so no need to java is 1.7 or 1.8 correct always i need to select the environment as java is 1.7 or 1.8 yeah yes. i think one time it will select it then next time it will populate automatically yes correct super then then finish finish yes after that so what are the, when i create the project what are the folders will be there inside that Uh, there will be source and uh, jre library and in source there will be uh, yeah yeah so here when i come here so this is my second project so when i create the project i'll be having what are the folders in the main folder yeah yeah bin source setting mm. so source and then bin folder others are it's okay the main thing you have to remember is source folder then bin folder right right what is that source folder is going to contain what is that bin folder is going to contain source folder uh, inside the source folder whatever the code we will write i mean dot java file will be in the source and dot class file will be in the bin super so what is the usage of the dot class files uh dot class file is a executable file and uh, dot java is the uh, what is that called compiler will um, Yes, so we will be writing the files that will be saved as .java. Right. Okay, good. So now, can you create me a package? Yeah, we need to uh, do the right click in the source folder. Super. Then new, then package. Yes. Then here we need to give the name of the package. So. And yeah, it will start in the lower case. Yes. So, is it mandatory that I need to start with lower case letter for a package? Uh, I think it's coming in the above. It's a warning. So, see, right. if I give a space, it's giving me invalid package name, which is a error. 
right, right. With yeah. space, I cannot create, but with capital letter, it's a we can create it. The only thing is, it's not a standard practice. They say. Okay. okay. So I'll start with a small letter. Finish. Yes. Then. Uh, then we need to right click in the package and. Uh, yes. New class. New class. And uh, we'll, uh, it will start with the uh, uppercase letter. Yes, class names always should start with the uppercase letter. Is it mandatory? I think yes. Learning. Yeah. Java. So if I give it a small letter, what does that mean? It's giving a warning. Warning. Is it mandatory? That means? No, no, it's no. not mandatory. If I give a space, it's a problem. Okay, it's not valid. If I give dot, that is also not valid. Comma, those things are only not acceptable. Okay, mm -hmm. capital letter or uh, small letters, it's acceptable. Only thing is standard, it's not a standard practice, it's saying that's it. Right. Okay, um, yes. Then to select the main method. Yes. So, so, then select this default also as of now then okay. select this main function so right now i forgot to select this main function public setting void main yeah then it click on finish if i want to get my main what is the shortcut for me to get it oh uh main then con control space enter awesome super okay then if i want to print hello world yeah uh we need to give the uh, system dot out uh Shortcut that is so a control control space enter super uh, then within the uh, yeah double, double to write hello super hello world hey super Krishna awesome cool thanks yeah thank you so this is how to create a project package and then a class okay next we'll see about the data types and variables okay we'll have a short break i don't want to continue with a full fledged okay we'll have a break for a five minutes okay so uh, seven minutes we'll have so eight ten we'll again connect guys okay it's a small basic doubt here small yeah, yeah 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 yes tell me prakash how are you looking the folders src bin folder uh, how are we looking the folders the other screen you are showing the four folders right SRC, ah, so right click on the project go to properties then you can get the location where my that is actually this is just a ui representation this exists okay original files are stored under uh, my uh, d drive and then murli laptop this place only correct Sorry. so i just copy that information then i went here paste it under my location this is the place okay so new eclipse learning is my workspace in that i have two projects here my first java and then second project see my first java and then second project correct if i go into the second project i have my source folder jr system library here but the same thing if i come over here you can see source folder bin folder and then some temporary files which will be helpful for my execution so yeah. whatever I do, it will be always be saved. So whatever we are seeing is only a front end, but back end it always be saved. I need yes. to know the location through going through properties, copy paste at location in the browser, and I will go to the part, right? Correct. This is the best originate to be saved. See in the source folder. So right now, if you see, I created the source. First package is what I created now. In that we are learning java.java. So if I go here, learning Java, which is a Java file. Why? Because it's a source folder. Right click, edit. You can see the same information what I have written over there. Okay. 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 See, now I'll write another thing. Sizzle. Welcome. Then I'll save it. Okay. Then I'll close this. I'll open it one more time. Can you see? all right got it yeah very clear okay yeah. whatever we write we will get it in the source folder the same thing when i come to the bin folder i told you it's a 
class file. So what are the things we are doing there that will be creating here. So when you try to right click and then open, we don't have edit here. Open, gives you Windows cannot open the file because only GVM can open and then read the file. Yeah. So now I'll try to execute the program. Right click, run as Java application. Hello world, welcome is coming, correct? Now I'll delete this class file, see, right click, delete. Now I'll try to execute the program. See, I cannot execute the program. Could not find the main class, the class file. Because I don't have the class file. If we don't have the class files, JVM cannot execute the program. Understood? So class files is mandatory for execution. So now I got it. So whenever I again save it, I'll be getting my information. I do small changes in my program. Then I save it, I'll get the class file. Now when I run it, I get it. Understood? See, now I'll delete it. Now I'll try to run it. I cannot execute it. Same thing, I'll just give a small space. Okay, then it'll ask me to save the program. When I save it, see now, class files are created. Now when I try to run it, I can execute it. Understood? Yeah, very clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So saving, you are not doing anything, right? When you are executing, it is automatically getting saved. Right? Yes. Right? Why that has been saved means if we go to the project here, we'll have an option called build automatically that has been checked. Okay. 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 Because of this one, always automatically will be saved. If I don't have this, then it's like from my side, the saving will not happen properly. That is, I need to specifically save the program, then only it will be created. That passwords. Otherwise, not be created. Understood now? Yeah. Okay. We'll have a break now. Till 8.15, we'll have a break. Then after that, we'll again connect. Okay. Thank you.
Hello. Hey, hi, guys. We'll start the session. So we have seen how to create a project package and a class and then how to execute it. Now we'll see how to, uh, what, what is data types and then what is a variable we see. So you guys would have known what is data types. So I'll just say the same thing. So now we'll see. So data types. You all would have known about some data types which you would have learned from your college or in your school days over here. So the same thing we're just going to see once. Can you just list down as what are the data types you guys know? Uh, Dhanajay, Gautami, Prakash and Prajna. Can you guys tell me what are the data types you know? In char float. Superb. In char then we have float boolean boolean we have super yes then double double we have yes correct long i'm oh, sorry long long long, long correct yeah. uh, uh those things are different here yeah? then apart from anything else String is there, but again in Java it's a class. Yes, correct. String alone is a class, but also act as a data type here. Okay, yes. Then. Then also we have byte. Then we have short. Okay, these are the different data types that are available in Java. Understood, please? These are the data types that are available in Java. String alone is not a data type here, it's a class here, but also acts as a data type here. That's what average. Uh, sorry? Average data type. Uh, average, those are all not data types here. So only these things are data types here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now, what is that these data types are going to do? So if you see this byte, short, int, long, all those things are helpful for me to store numbers. Then this float and double are helpful for me to store decimals. Character and string. So I'll just move it. this one. This boolean. So boolean helpful for me to store true or false. That's what it be helpful. Character helpful for me to store a single letter alone. It might be a letter or it might be a number. Anything only one 
letter alone I can store. Anything should be given in single code. That will be called as a character. The same thing, string we have. Any information that comes in double quotes, that will be called as a string. Single letter, or it might be a number, or it might be a group of words also. Hello world. Okay, these things are called as a string here. Yeah. Understood? Anyone has a question so far on this? Any questions so far for anyone? Okay, guys. Cool. So we have byte, short, integer, long. All those things are going to help me to show numbers. Then why we need these many data types? That's what the next question arises here. So these all data types are kind of a container which helps the variable to say this is the value max you can store it. Okay, at least and to the max, this is what you can store it. That's what they're going to say. Okay, so for example, everything is a kind of a container record. This is byte, short, integer, long, float, double, we yeah. are. So, if you see here from, from here it grows here, okay? So this is byte, this is byte, This is byte. This is short. This is integer and long. This is float. This is double. So right now I'm not going to give the perfect numbers. I'm just trying to give you an understanding for you. So what is data text? That's what I'm trying to give you right now, help you here. So now if you see, so byte can store values from, for example, minus 128 to 127. This is what byte can store values. Same thing if you see short, it can store values from minus 500 to 500. Integer, minus, thousand to thousand five hundred then long it can store values from minus two thousand five hundred to three thousand float minus four thousand point double zero to four thousand point double nine double minus seven thousand double zero to ten thousand point double nine this is what you can store okay this is what the range here so right now if I value if I have a value here which is of three fifty if my value is 350, so which are the data types will be helpful for me to store? That's what we're going to see. So if it's 350, byte minus 127 to 120, minus 120 to 127, in this range, will I can store this 350? No, so byte will not accept. Short, minus 500 to 500, in this range 350 comes? Yes, it comes. So in short, I can store that value. Short. Then minus 1000 to 1500, it will be helpful to store. Yes, I can store it in integer also. Then minus 2000 to 500 to 3000. In this range also, I can store this. Okay. Long. That also will be accepted. Understood, please? Everyone understood? So, this is what 
the data types will help us to save. That is, I can store this. This is what my container uh, space. I can store these values here. So if my value is seven ninety, now Gautami, can you tell me which are the data types will it be accepted? It's a number. Can you tell me which are the data types will be accepted? Teacher. So, byte and short will it accept? Let's. Byte and short will it accept? No, because. It... No. Yes. Why? Because it's of this 790. Okay, minus 500 to 500. In this range, 790 does not came. Minus 120 to 127. In this range also, it does not came here. So that's why. That will not be accepted for me. Clear now? Same thing actually, if you see in this integer, it will be accepted. Okay. So in integer, if you see right now, minus 1000 to 1500 in this range, 790 comes. So it will be accepted for. So it will be accepted in integer. Then anything else? Uh, go to me, you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else will be accepted? Integer apart from that? What are the data types will be helpful for me to show numbers? By short, integer, and long. Correct? So, integer accept minus 1000 to 1500. Long? 2523. So, in this data type, long data type, can you store 790? Mm. No. Why? Because the average is 1000 to 1500. Long, long? Long, yes. Um, yes, but it's too short, right? The average, the number? Number is 719. Minus 2500 to 3000. In this range, 790 will come? No. Why? Because in 3000 minus 25 means only 500 will come. No, 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 not like that. 2500, 2499, 2498, 2497, like that, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that, it goes. Okay? Guys, understood? Everyone understood? Uh, did you understand? Yes, yes. So now, can you tell me 790 can be stored in long? I'm not able to understand whether you understood or not. Can you reply me, Gautami? Yes, it can. Yeah, please tell me. I'm asking to you only. So now tell me my value is actually what? Uh, 120. Now can you tell me in which other data types it can accept, Gautami? Byte. Byte. Short. Short. Like int, long, float. No, uh, byte, short, after that? Int. Integer. Well, then, I am not sure whether you understood or not. I don't uh, simply say that actually you understood. You should be very clear because if you're not saying to me, there is no problem for me. Everything like byte, short, int, long, float, double. Yes. So leave about the decimals here right now. These numbers, it can be stored here. These are the data types that supports numbers here. Okay. So now if my value is sub 600.30. Okay. So I'll make the 6000.30. Okay. So now, Prajna, can you tell me? Hey, thanks, Gautam. Uh, Prajna, can you tell me which other data types it will be supported? Is it decimal? Yeah, it will go under double. Okay, can it be stored under float? 
No, float range is less. Yes, correct. That's the thing. Same thing if it is 3000.20. Yeah, it will go under float as well as double. Correct. That's it. Understood. This is what data types will help us to do. Okay, it's a kind of a container which will help me to store values. Okay, which will tell the variables that these are the values can be accepted for you. That's what they will be helping for you. So now we go for data types. Okay, we have seen about we have seen about Hello, is there a Hello, sorry, this got disconnected. Sorry. So now, if I see the original numbers, data type range in Java. So this is what the original numbers. Byte can store values from minus 128 to 127. Short can store values from minus 32,768 to 32,767. Integer, minus 2147, this numbers to this numbers it can store. Same thing, long, it can store values up to this range. Float, it's a big range, which can support over that comes for trillions or something. Same thing, double also accepts for a bigger numbers here. Okay, then character, boolean, all those things we have information. Okay, this is what here, here and information can be stored here. Understood? This is what characters are, uh, sorry, this is what data types is about. Next, we'll go for variables. Okay, variable is what means. Okay, variable is just a memory location which helps me to store values on it. Variable. A memory location. It's a memory location, which the value. sorry, variable it stores the value. Correct, correct. Which helps to store values in it. Okay, that's what a variable will help us to do here. So now, for me, how a variable? Okay, in variable there are two things that are there. One is declaration. Another one is initialization these are the two things okay. so how a variable can be declared means integer i i'll be giving okay this is how called as declaration okay how a variable can be initialized means i is equal to 10 that's what we do so what this integer i will do means okay so for example i will Integer i when I give what will happen? It creates a memory location for me like this. Okay, then after that, the memory location name will be i. Then this integer here will act as a reference, tell to the memory location store only integer values. That means what? Store only values from minus thousand to thousand five hundred, this range. So that's what this will do. Okay. Same thing that here, if you see, this is the proper range. Store only values from minus 2147, this number to this number. Only store those values alone. That's what it would do. Same thing, when I give initialization, i is equal to 10. Now what will happen? It will store values. So find a memory location called i in that store value called 10 here. 
that's what it's going to do clear for everyone anyone has any questions on this so far understood guys everyone understood what is initialization okay declaration initialization can be done in a single step also declaration and initialization can be done in a single step also for example integer a is equal to 20 if i give what will happen right now for me it creates me a memory location here then the memory location name will be a then this integer will act as a reference tell to the memory location store only integer values alone then this 20 will be stored here that's what it will do clear everyone understood anyone has any questions on this so far once again if i give here a is equal to 40 this is called as reinitialization this is called as reinitialization so what will happen right now for me a equal to 40 so this will be replaced here so find sir we uh, find a variable which is matching with memory location called a in that replace the value from 20 to 40 that's what is going to do understood guys everyone okay this is what variable okay so variables is of two types one is a local variable another one is a global variable one is a global another one is local so we have seen how to declare an initialize so first we'll see basic new class variable default i'll have a main function so i'll finish i'll not have a main function i'll try to write it here so if you want the main shortcut is m a i n control space enter i got my main function okay the so shortcut is m a i n control plus space button plus enter button okay so if i want to declare a variable integer i is yeah if i want to initialize i is equal to 10 okay so, so control space then if i want to print the value of the variable just give i the variable name right click run as java application gives me 10 same thing if i give here this i in double quotes that any information that has been given in double quotes will be taken as a string it prints as it is that's what it will do clear up clear for everyone that's what it will do here okay so now for me this is declaration this is initialization then if i give one second i is equal to 50 this is called as re initialization okay once again if i try to print the value of i that will print me 50 here clear prints me 50 that's what it will do understood so now variables is of two types i told you what are the two types of variable okay so types of variable
what are the types of variables okay we have one local variable another one we have global variable okay any variable that has been declared inside the main function okay a variable declared inside the main function declare inside the main okay will be called as the local variable variable declared inside the main function will be called as a local variable okay so a variable declared outside the main function that is what global variable okay global variable is of two types okay global variable is of two types one is static another one is non static one is static another one is non static here okay yeah, i would like to say One is static, other one is non-static. One is static, another one is non-static. So how this one works over here is okay. So if I have a class. class abc this is my class so in this class if i have a main function public static void main string arguments so this is my main function okay any variable that has been declared inside the function a equal to 10 okay this is called as local variable this is called as local variable okay any variable that has been declared outside the function integer i is equal to 100 integer j equal to 200 these two are global variable global variable is of two types global variable is of two types one is static another one is non static okay one is a static variable another one is a non static variable so how all these things can be accessed means so local variable if you want to access CISO, a if i give that will print me the value of a okay that will print me the value of a what is that that is 10. if i want to access the global variable how I can access means so if it is a static variable I can access it with the help of class name CISO ABC dot I CISO ABC dot I that's a with reference of a class name I can access it another one if it is a local where that is actually if it is a non static variable a variable which does not have a static keyword outside the main function will be called as a non static variable so this is static variable this is non static variable one is static another one is non static here. okay so a variable which is being non static if i want to access i want to create an object so how to create an object means abc obj1 equal to new abc i need to create an object like this so new abc will help me to create the object obj1 will be the object name then abc will be what that will be my reference here okay abc will be the reference obj1 equal to new abc so what will happen right now means so 
it will create me an object and then it will load all the global numbers. So what are the global members means static variable, non static variable and even my main function. Okay, all these things are global variables. So all these things will be loaded into this object. Okay, so we'll see that one. How? Then CISO obj1 dot j that will help me to get me print me the j value even here right now CISO obj1 dot i static variables can be accessed with help of class name okay with the help of a class name with the help of an object name and even I can access it directly the variable name okay directly with the help of the variable name also I can access it that's how we can access understood everyone understood please anyone has any questions so far so this is global variable So now we'll do the same thing here. New usage of calculators global local variables. I'll just give and I'm a main function. So I'll ask hey hi Prajna. Can you declare me one local variable for me? Where you can declare? I'll give the line numbers. Where yeah. I can declare local variables? Yeah, local variable we need to declare in the line number six, which will come inside the main. Super. Can you declare? Yeah, int a. A. That's what declaration. Yes. Now, can you initialize? Yeah, int a equal to five. Int a equal to five. It's throwing me a why? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, why it's throwing me error? Uh, because when you give int, it's a declaration that means creates a new variable. Understood. So for me, I need to give like this. That is, I'm representing the variable here. I'm trying to give here a equal to five. So that means what will happen right now for me? It identifies a memory location called a, and then it will change. The, it will give, uh, give the value, initialize the value to five here. That's five. what it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. If I give in, what will happen? Once again, it tries to create a another variable called a but already we have a variable name called a it will become as a duplicate that's why it throws me an error okay now if i want to print it i want to print the value of a how can i do that yeah system uh, shortcut is so control space enter. super ciso and then control space a. Then, can I give like this? No, no. It what will happen give, if I give? Yeah, it will give that, then it, it will print the letter uh, A. Yeah, because any information that is given in a string, that will be the unique information that is given in a double quotes will be treated as a string only. Right, yeah. So I need to give in A. So right click, run as the application. Gives me five. Yes. Can you declare and initialize another variable called b, which the value is 20? Declare and initialize both at the same okay. time. Int b equal to 20. Int b equal to 20. Yes. This is declaration initialization. I print it. Super. Right click run as Java application. 5 and 20. Hey, super. Thanks, Krishna. So now next, uh, go to me. Can you declare and initialize a global variable which is of static? The variable name is i. 
declare in initial case a static and non static variable which is i and j and where i need to declare which line number i'll show you here so i think this can tell me Could you, could you please repeat the question? Ah, that is, I want to declare and initialize a static and non-static variable, which is variable name is ing. And then in which line number I need to declare and initialize in this space. Okay, so that is global variable. Where global variables can be declared and initialized? Or yeah, no, you're guessing or you know it and then you're saying the answer because I don't want anyone to guess in the class because you have to understand it because that's why you're coming for this, you're paying and then you're coming for the class. Okay, so in, yeah, why it's actually you have to give it in four, can you tell me? So simple concept. One. Sorry. Outside. Okay. Uh, simple. The thing is, any variable that has been declared inside the main functions will be called as local. Yeah. Any variable that will be declared outside the functions will be called as global variables. Global. Yes. Global variable is of two types. One is static. static Non-static. Another one is non-static. Yeah. Clear. So now. I'll just give you. So I want one static and then one non-static variable, which is i and j. Can you declare and initialize? Mm. Int. C. Okay, C. Is equal to equal 10. to ten. Okay, super. Then I want one static, another one is non-static. Two variables. Yes. Next step. Yes. So In int d equal to twenty. So these two are global variables. Okay, so I want one as a static, another one as a non-static. So if I want it as a static variable, what I need to do? I need to make it as with a keyword called static here. Okay, that makes me this is a static variable, and then this is a non-static variable. Okay, it hey, could thanks, thanks, Gautami. So next, Danachi, I want to access both the static and non-static variable. Can you tell me how I can do that? Uh, yeah, uh, you need to create an object. Uh, first, static variables, how I can access? Uh, that is in uh, uh, system. Like ah, so, system. you can see here. Yeah, like CISO, uh, last name dot uh, uh, interior. So, CISO. CISO. Control space. So, so, so control space. Uh, then the class name. So, so, so class name. So, what is my class name here? Class name is global local variables. Okay. So, global local variables is my class name. Yeah. Dot then, C. dot. C. C. Can you see when I press dot, I will be getting all my information here. Understood? Yeah. So my variable name is C here. So C. Okay, next. Nice. Yeah. So then next. Uh, so C, I'll just get. Then next. Uh, next. Then uh, we need to create an object. 
Correct. So if it's a non-static variable, how I can access here? Uh, then I need to create an object. Which will be the global local variables object one equals to new global local variable. Equal to new global local variables. Understood? Yeah. Okay. So new global local variables will what it will do. So we will see. So okay, first we'll access it. So now global local variables obj1 equal to new global local variables. So my object. This object will have all the global members. What are the global members here? The C and D. C and D. Then even my main function. So now, this is obj1 dot. Dot C. Correct. So C is a static variable. Yeah. So I can access static and then non-static variable both. So yeah. C. Obj1 dot D. That's it. These two I can access here. Understood, please? Yeah. Okay. So then next. Okay. So you access C and D. So then another way of accessing static variables, I can access directly with the help of the variable name also. Mm -hmm. That's it. Clear? Anyone has any questions? No. Okay. Cool, guys. So this is about actually what uh, global and local variables. We will see again uh, tonight again can be set by night uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. to 10.30, uh, one and a half hours class. So that's because we are going very slow. So I cannot finish it by tomorrow for you the backup. So if we come by again today, then only I can finish it. I thought actually today we can complete, but uh, today it's like I took the Java execution, all those stuff. So it took more time. So we have not completed the variables only. So tomorrow I cannot complete it. So can we have the session by today by 9 p.m.? Sorry, 8 p.m.? Uh, 8 p.m. starts. Oh, sorry, uh, 9 p.m. Yeah, 9 p.m. is fine. Okay, 9 to 10 30 we will have the session today then again tomorrow the same time we'll have and then i want everyone so i have forwarded you the session topics to you guys so um for uh, you guys i have forwarded the session topics uh, so i want uh, you all three to just have a look on that so that actually today we are saying about this java and then jdk installation okay so the same thing i just want you guys to have a look on it so here i mentioned clearly about what is variable data types same thing what we have explained here okay then again today we will see about the memory location concept still now you're not seeing just have a look and then try to install the java jdk eclipse alone okay okay guys thank you anyone has any questions so far anyone has any questions dhanajay prajna gautami no. anyone else no. okay cool okay so today yeah thank you today we'll again meet by evening 9 pm thank you yeah